science on me. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what, what about me? It's not science? <laughs> oh, I, I apologize. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. <laughs> Chile, as we all know, or many of us know, uh, is effectively, if, if you think about it from an ecological perspective, Chile is a biogeographical island. And it's a biogeographical, and what I mean by that is that it's isolated. It is, and this is having a mind of its own, um, it is, um, it, it is uh, segregated from the rest of South, South America to the north by the desert to the east by the mountains, and to the west, obviously, and to the south by the Pacific Ocean. So it's, it's an island, and that island um, dramatically impacts the aquatic environment, as the, the freshwater aquatic environment, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Furthermore, and again, let me just back up for a second, kind of think of this, if, if, if you will, to kind of frame it. Think of it from a regulatory perspective. Think about it from the perspective of like in the United States, the US EPA, and how you would go about protecting the natural resource, protecting the freshwater resource. Uh, so first of all, it's an island. Second of all, uh, the resource is dramatically different from north to south, just like it is in the United States from east to west, where you have a relatively mesic east, eastern United States, and then a very xeric, desert-like western United States. Same thing in Chile, whereas uh, it's, it's a relatively, whoops, it's a relatively uh, xeric northern environment and a relatively mesic west, uh, southern environment. Okay, so bear that in mind. All right, now if, if you think about it relative to the perspective of, of again, being a biogeographical island, we have to, I, again, I need to back up for a second and I'm an aquatic toxicologist, and we're interested in looking at chemical impacts on the natural resource. And in that, in that environment, um, the, the issue, and this thing again is having a, uh, uh, Mason, can I turn the, the uh, automatic slide thing off? Yeah, sure, you can. You can't let that pass. <laughs> I'm an academic, I never talk fast. I talk long, I'm, I'm more of a marathon than a sprint. <laughs> Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. Can I just can I just do this? Yeah, we do that. Yeah, cool. All right. All right. So uh, in uh, uh, so again, if, if if we if we think about uh, Chile as an island, and we also think about protecting the natural resource. Um, one problem, and Bob and I were talking about this last night, and, and he, we were having dinner, and after a couple of beers, he said, all right, what's one of the toxicological problem misconceptions? And I said, well, you know, one misconception is that if you're gonna go out into the environment and you're gonna measure something, it's always there. Because it's not, because it, these, these waters are moving, right, so the stuff is going downstream. Also, many of these chemicals, or at least a large number of these chemicals, degrade in the environment, so they fall apart. So you can have a problem, that problem may be there today, but may not be there tomorrow. So because of that, you can't really measure uh, the water, because sometimes it's in the water and sometimes it's not. All right? So we have really three things going on. Chile is an island, chemicals aren't always there, and number three is if you start to think, so because the chemicals aren't always there, just like a uh, canary in a coal mine, right, in toxicology in the United States, you need to have an, a sentinel organism, an animal that you can monitor the environment through. So you can look at that animal and say, okay, what's going on in the environment? This is where the island problem comes in. There's not that many fish in, uh, freshwater fish in Chile because it's, because it's uh, biogeographically isolated from the rest of South America. So if you look at it, the, the total of Chile, and this is, this may not mean much to you, but this is an incredibly depauperate freshwater ichthyofauna, right? The number of fish is very, very small. 45 native fish, 36, 36 endemics, 18 threatened or endangered species, many of which, have res which are restricted in their geographic range. So if that's all true, how do you de develop the white rat of the aquatic environment in Chile? It's not, an easy, it's not an easy question, and that's kind of what I'm down here to work with my colleagues at the University of Concepcion about. 
Uh, in addition to the, all those natives, just like everywhere else in the world, uh, we, humans, have brought in all kinds of other fish. So we're bringing in stuff like rainbow trout and brown trout and common carp. So we have these animals here. So again, the question is, what do you do? From, an, in, from a regulatory perspective, if you need your laboratory white rat, you need your canary in a coal mine in order to uh, uh, analyze uh, the environment toxicologically, what do you use? Well, one thing you can say is, hey, look, let's 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 go with rainbow trout. There's some real advantages of going with for of using rainbow trout. First of all, they have a broad geographic range across the country. Their animal husbandry, because the, because of what has been done in Europe and the United States and elsewhere, is extremely well understood. Their molecular biology, because of its, uh, its, its prevalence in, in other countries, is also extremely well understood. So this animal, we know a tremendous amount about this animal. So yeah, just use that. That's perfect. Well, not really, because it is an endangered species. So since it's an endangered species, I, I, excuse me, it's an invasive species. Since it's an invasive species, it may have very different sensitivities to CECs. Now, CECs are chemicals of emerging concern, right, which would be things like pesticides and, and other things. It, it has a very different sensi sensitivity. So if you're concerned about the impact of the freshwater ichthyofauna of Chile, and you're going to use rainbow trout, it would be like saying, okay, we're going to measure, you know, we're going to look at cancer, prostate cancer in North America, and we're going to use Chileans. That doesn't yeah. even make any sense, right? They don't live in North America. They don't have the same food habits as we do. They don't have the same environment. Nothing's the same. So why would you use them to make that relationship? It, it, it doesn't make sense. In a way, we were talking about this last night, in a way it's kind of that equity, diversity, inclusion, but in the fish world, right? I mean, we can't use these guys because they're not the natives, and you really have to deal with, with the natives. Also, if you're dealing with an invasive, what does that tell you about the ecosystem? It doesn't tell you anything about the ecosystem because they're not from this ecosystem. So how could they possibly tell you anything about the ecosystem? So rainbow trout have a lot of advantages, but they also have a lot of disadvantages. Well, what about, what about let's, let's bring in a native. So we've been doing some work, and I'll show you a little bit of data about this. Because um, I've, I've done some work with my Chilean colleagues uh, for the last four or five years. And so I'll show you a little bit of data relative to this guy. This is the Chilean pencil catfish. It's about three inches long. Um, it's actually really, really cute. And, it, 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 and it's, it's also very interesting. Uh, I'll put on my, my, my geek um, uh, fish hat here. But it's also really interesting because this animal fills the niche of amphibians, of salamanders, because there aren't any amphibians. So it's filling that niche. So it's taken its, sorry, it's taken its pectoral fins and developed in, into like little legs so it can actually walk around. On, uh, so it's, it's really a fascinating little animal. <laughs> really, really cool. So, um, but so we're, we're, we're interested in using this little guy as a sentinel organism for Chile. The advantage is that it is broadly distributed across the country, so this is probably the most populous native fish in Chile. Uh, and it's sensitive to, and, and as a native, if you're seeing problems with this catfish in a, in a stream or a river or wherever else, it probably is telling you something about the ecosystem because these animals are native there. Right? So if you're hitting this animal, you're probably hitting other animals within the overall ecosystem as well. So it's really advantageous from that perspective. But there's some disadvantages too. The disadvantages is, are that uh, the animal husbandry has not been worked out because we just started, I mean there are other, other laboratory groups working on this animal as well, but uh, there's, not a, there's, there's nowhere near the length and breadth of information on the Chilean catfish as there is on the rainbow trout, right? So animal husbandry has not been worked out. Molecular biomarkers for exposure haven't been worked out. Uh, black box. This animal is a black box relative to ecotoxicology. So there's some problems. Also, there's the other problem, which may actually even be the larger problem, of we certainly don't want to be insensitive, go into the environment, collect animals, 
and then lead to adverse impacts to the ecosystem or adverse impacts to the populations of these animals. That, that would be awful. We certainly uh, uh, don't want to do that. So, so we, need to be, we need to be careful about that, which is why the animal husbandry is so important. Because if you can rear these animals in the, in the, in, in the laboratory, in an in a, um, aquaculture facility, then you can take these animals out, put them in cages, put them in the environment, and this is what happens in North America with rainbow trout and other animals all the time, right? You put them in the, then they can become a real canary in a coal mine, right? Where you're domestic, you kind of domesticated the animal, and then you can use it to assess the environment. So that's kind of where we want to go. We don't know if that's going to work or not, but that's what I'm here to, that's what I'm here to explore. Now, getting back, getting to the, you know, what are we exploring? Well, as we all, are probably very well aware. The rivers in, the, in Chile are very short. They're about 100, 150 miles long. They run from the Andes to the ocean, right? That's it. Uh, and also, at least in the middle region of, this, of, the, um, of the country, kind of where we are now, maybe a couple regions north, a couple regions south, right? Uh, the, re the, the rivers are punctuated where you have a river, desert, a river, desert, a river, desert, right? And as we all, as we're, many of you are probably aware, agriculture is intensely um, uh, uh, associated with those riverine systems. So if you're within 10 miles, and if, if, if any of you have been to wine country here, you've seen this. If you're within 10 miles of the river, it's green. If you're 11 miles, it's brown. It's desert, right? I mean, you, you, you have this strip of agriculture and then desert on either side of it. So in that environment, um, so, so relative to the chemicals of concern, of emerging concern here in Chile, we have mining effluent um, and liquid industrial wastes, right? Because in the mountains, in the Andes, you're having all kinds of mining. Uh, we have pulp and paper mill effluent because in the, um, in the um, Bio Bio region where I'm gonna be going, there's um, a lot of evergreen trees, a lot of, a lot of um, pulp and paper. So you have pulp and paper effluent. And then you have, of course, as we were just saying, you have agriculture, non-point non source runoff from the agricultural fields. And then, of course, what you also have is these fish are experiencing a cocktail of 20 different compounds. So how are all these compounds interdigitating with the biology of these fish? Really complex. But it's also really cool, and it's a really, from an ecotoxicological geek such as myself, it's a really fascinating question. So it's, it's really kind of cool. So let me just real quickly show you some, some work that we've done before. Uh, in the Chihuahua River, which is in the, in the uh, region to the north, um, it's a population of about 82,000 people within the watershed. Again, agriculturally intensive, grapes, citrus, walnuts, you name it. Uh, we looked at the river coming from the, the Andes down effectively to the ocean, and what we see here, and this is the, um, I, I don't want to get too far into the weeds here, but we, we're looking at gene expression. So how much the animal is expressing certain genes. These are female fish, so on a female fish, they should be expressing the estrogen re receptor, the, the molecule that binds to estrogen. Right, just what's happening on all the females in this room, right? Well, actually, in all of us, because males and females, but more so in, you know, probably an order of magnitude greater in females, but you get the point. What we're seeing, though, is as this water is coming down from the Andes to the ocean, the level of expression, how much the DNA is expressing these proteins, these estrogen receptors, is going down. So, in other words, these females are being defeminized by the environment in which they live, which is pretty cool. It's also what we see in North America, in agricultural areas. Those pesticides lead to a defeminization of female fish, so it's really kind of interesting. So, so again, uh, in conclusion, uh, in Chile, there's an, there's an effort right now to think about what canary in the coal mine can be used in order to assess water quality, uh, what fish best fits that goal. Um, the lack of molecular tools for Chilean fish is currently being uh, addressed, particularly for trichomycteris. This is that little pencil catfish. Future work will uh, is likely to, to use both invasive species, trout, 
as well as natives, uh, and kind of using it as like a um, like a Chinese buffet menu, right? Where you pick the animal based on what your question is, based on what your problem is. Uh, the work that I've done thus far has been a collaboration between uh, my colleagues at the University of Concepcion, uh, which is where I'll be heading uh, actually this Friday, and then also my colleagues up north at the University of, of La Serena. Uh, and with that, I, I'm happy to take any questions if you have. Thank you.